It is with immense pleasure that I welcome you back to the American College of Surgeons Bulletin Brief from the Front Lines, Surgeons' Voices. With me today is Professor Antonio Lacey, a very dear friend, I would say a brother to me, uh, although younger by about a week, um, who is a master surgeon based in Barcelona at Hospital Clinic, also the brains, as you'll hear, behind the AS channel, and very importantly, an honorary fellow of the American College of Surgeons. Welcome, Antonio. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, you know, for the opportunity to speak uh, some minutes with you, and and maybe I give you my what is my ideas for the for the present and for the future. Thank you. That that would be great. There's many things about which we could talk. You're you're a leader in laparoscopic surgery, the the Barcelona trial, the randomized control trial for open versus laparoscopic colon cancer is really what gave us the green light for proceeding with laparoscopy for colon cancer. Your involvement with transanal uh, total mesorectal excision is, is legendary as the pioneer and, and really the godfather of that operation. But, but today, I don't want to focus on colorectal surgery or laparoscopy. Instead, to talk about global video-based education and another one of your many contributions to surgery. Perhaps if you would start out and tell us what was the idea behind the AS channel, the Advances in Surgery channel? Okay, at the beginning was something probably because when you are getting older, probably you need to, to do something for the rest of the people, the legacy, I think. I don't want to, to, to have a private legacy, but I think it's important because I think that the, the world is not, the justice is not in everywhere. You know, it, depending where you're born, you have more opportunities or not. And that's, we cannot take this. And the origin of the AIS was, okay, I wanted to, uh, I commit, probably the idea was good and I commit some mistake because I think the idea is trying to have the best surgeons with the best surgery. You know, we record this and we sent absolutely free to the rest of the people. And at the beginning, we, uh, we, uh, we had many complicated procedures. And we decided, you know, said so that is, a, is, is not the, the right way to do. And we come back to, uh, we, we decided to have less complicated, like a simple hernia, or simple knee procedure, et cetera. And we started with the, with the videos, like, let me compare, like a Netflix. And you decided which uh, operation we need to see. But the first rule is absolutely free for everyone in the world. We started now six, seven years ago, and we decided we have to do more things. And we changed, and now we have different verticals related with, uh, with courses, related with uh, many things, innovation, etc. But the idea was, okay, we, we need to compensate if you're born in Florida, probably is different if you're born in Uganda. And that is, uh, is something is not uh, in terms of the justice to the people, the opportunities. Only, only between three and 7% of the surgeons can travel around the world to increase uh, uh, their opportunities. So traveling around the world uh, used to be three to 7%. It, it may now be under 1% given, given COVID. Uh, timing, uh, timing is everything is an, an expression I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you've heard. And in this case, the AS channel was five or six years into its existence when, when COVID hit. Uh, so certainly there's been a, a wealth of, of programming. Um, and maybe you can tell us about the reach that uh, you've been able to achieve during COVID, the global reach. Yeah, we decided in media because we, for some reasons, we have a good contact immediately with the with the with the doctors in Wuhan, and in media we realize, okay, Wuhan is okay. It's a part of the world. Probably no, no many people knows the even the city. However, you know, uh, Wuhan is part of the world, and people is traveling. And the majority of, you know, the big governors from China were in Wuhan, I think, 10 days before. 
And that was, for us, was very complicated. Immediately when we have the same thing in, uh, in Iran and the same thing in Italy, we said, that is here. And immediately we contact with them and we created a vertical, we, uh, we named AIS COVID-19. AIS COVID-19, after uh, I think nine weeks open, we have incredible uh, number of visits with IPs more than four or five million people. And now we have uh, close eight million people because we sent all the information, we, uh, we have the information thanks to many people. One of the most important uh, surgeons related with this uh, initiative is no doubt was Professor Steve Wexner. Immediately you, like others, realize that is important because COVID is not a, a, a disease only for a pneumologist or an infection disease or something. It's, it's a general pandemic and we immediately realize we have a very important situation, at least in our waiting list in, in surgery, many things, and of course, in education related with, because traveling stopped immediately. Now, we, when we started out, and, and I say we because it's my pleasure, privilege, honor to have worked with you since the inception, we used to do things like live surgery um, and in the annual meeting in London with lectures and perhaps three or four simultaneous live surgery and then evolved to pre-recorded, so, so deferred live surgery, if you will, for, for a variety of reasons. And, and now we have pre-recorded lectures uh, and, and panel discussion followed by chat. Um, how has that worked out in, in terms of the feedback from audiences that they see, a, let's say 90 minutes worth of lectures and panel discussion? What's the feedback you're getting? Yeah, again, thank you for your question because it, again, it's, it's, you know, it was absolutely uh, a crazy, it's a success because the minimum, you know, I, I just, when I say, uh, 20,000, 30,000 is related with IPs because I don't know exactly how many people, real people are. Because sometimes in some countries, some hospitals, it's one IP for 10 people, 20 people. But the minimum for the audience for this incredible lectures, you know, combining many things, not only related with simple surgery, but we created, for example, what is the ideal organization, the hospital, how to prevent aerosols, etc., energy, many things. The minimum is 25,000 people connected. You know, I could imagine. Sometimes was, I think, was 47. The reason is because you are right. Is because people is not traveling. People has probably more time to do it. As some hospitals cancel 100% of the operation. But at the same time, you know, uh, we, uh, we uh, you know, help to the hospital because during the first wave, you know, we practically cancel the majority of operations. We just operate emergency cases. But the, during the second and the third, you know, the surgeon, you know, collaborate very, you know, very close with the organization of the hospital. And during the third wave, we can operate in minimum 80, 85% of our uh, scheduled uh, operating theaters. And that is thanks to the, uh, to the COVID organization of the surgeons. And now we have, you know, we send, for example, a patient with, a, I don't know, gastric bypass to morbid obesity uh, patient, we send 24 hours uh, later, but not a hotel because we don't have the organization like you have in the United States. We sent to uh, uh, their home and we sent a nurse, you know, uh, twice a day, you know, just to check. And that we learn a lot, you know, thanks to the COVID. Probably our organization, probably in Spain, no doubt, but the organization around the world can be better thanks to this horrible pandemic situation. Uh, I, I absolutely agree. And I also applaud your efforts to diversify from surgery per se, from the technical aspects uh, and fund of knowledge relating to 
the, the art and science of surgery into areas that affect all surgeons. And you, you touched on it earlier with the comparison between Florida and Uganda. And, and those are some of the programs that we've done in collaboration with the American College of Surgeons on leadership and on diversity, which <clears throat> as far as I know, are some of the most heavily watched programs because those are problems throughout the world. Uh, leadership and, and diversity. So, so do you envision AIS branching out further and focusing on these topics that are not technical ones, which is how AIS founded, but, but rather uh, cerebral ones uh, and organizational ones and administrative ones? How do, you, how do you run surgery? How do you make surgery better for everybody? How do you make it accessible throughout the world? How do you promote people for diversity, equity, and inclusion in surgery? Yeah. Probably, Steve, probably you remember a nice, but for me, it's a nice paper published in Another Surgery last year. And I think it's, uh, you know, the title was very good. It's Preserving an Academic Mission in the Face of Clinical Productivity Targets. And that was, for me, was excellent. And let me say something. You are, you are one of the, my best friends, is no doubt, for many reasons. But you have something very complicated for a surgeon. A surgeon is a complicated, uh, you know, let me say, worker, a health worker. But they have three important aspects. And you have these three aspects. You have to be an excellent clinician. You have to be, because you are in a university hospital, you have to be an outstanding educator. And at the same time, you have to be a very good researcher. And that is very difficult in other disciplines because we spend a lot of time in the operating theater. Sometimes when we finish a very complicated operation with, I don't know, four or five hours, you know, operative time, it's difficult to sit in, in your uh, table and start to think or, or to promote research, etc., or educate. And that is complicated. That is the reason because I think we have to increase the number of people dedicated to academic, uh, let me say, you know, because the subtitle of the of the paper, I remember perfect, is where is the academic surgeon's carrot? And I think it's very good paper. Well, I, I agree with you, and I, I, I very much like your, your description in your answer. Uh, where do you see surgical education going in the future? Hopefully, one day in the not too distant future, COVID-19, the pandemic will be in our rearview mirror. Probably COVID-19 won't go away, but at least we'll learn how to coexist with it and how to function and start traveling again and start having congresses again. What do you vision, envision happening to uh, video-based, global, free education at that point in time? I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm quite, let me say, optimistic, or at the same time, realistic. Probably we never uh, uh, have again, you know, because uh, you know, Steve, we had too many congresses, too many curses, too many traveling around the world. Probably we lose time, you know, because just to make a conference, 20 minute conference, a lecture, you know, sometimes you travel, you know, two days uh, going uh, and, and or you lose four days. And that is not good. It's not good for you. It's not good for your family. It's not good for your hospital and for your patients. And that is probably that there are some congresses you know, I, I love to maintain, you know, one example is American College of Surgeons. So it's no doubt, American College of Surgeons, we need to do like we are trying to do in the Mobile World Congress, in the Mobile World Congress in next, in at the end of June, 20, <coughs> June 28. And we created a, let me say, like a, like a nucleus, trying to have people vaccinated, we, PCRs with many all the protective uh, measures, you know, to have uh, as much as possible people there. But we have to, and at the same time, probably the, the Congress of like American College of Surgeons will be hybrid because we can connect, we can make something like this. That's probably the, uh, you know, in the near future, probably for 2022. 
but in the near future, you know, education, you combine with many things, combined with digital surgery, combined with uh, uh, AI, many things, you know, and we can do like we are doing now, but even in better conditions. But it's no doubt, it's very important, not just for take a dinner with, uh, with Steve and Mariana, it's just to plan a new project. Sometimes it's good to have a, you know, content. We are human beings and human beings sometimes it's good to shake your hands, you know, something or a big hug, something like this is important, you know, to make relations. That is the reason because please, we need to create an atmosphere to the scientific uh, people with the, with the vaccination cards or something like that created better complex around the, the auditoriums or the venues. But that will be the future. I don't know if I'm, I will be retired, but I think the future will be absolutely more optimistic than we have in the past. Very, very wise, very sage comments. And I uh, certainly hope you don't retire because a lot of surgeons and patients benefit from your experience and, and your technical prowess. Um, any parting comments before we leave our audience for this interview? Yeah, the most important comment is try to be like, I don't know, and now at the moment I, you know, I can see you, is the generosity. We have to, we have to think like an academic surgeon. We have to try to stimulate young surgeons because it's quite complicated sometimes, it's absolutely much better to be an academic surgeon, not, not only a surgeon, a technician. You know, I think for me, the surgical technique is very important, but it's not only the surgical technique. You have to, you have to use your brain to create protocols, to create papers, to create many things. But at the same time, you know, probably one of the main problems of the some surgeons is uh, is we call the ego. Say okay, now we have to share. That's in English when you say should probably is not uh, you know a strong. Uh, probably you have in English is you must to be you must to share your knowledge with the rest of the population, and I'm very you know again optimistic with people around between 25 and 35 is absolutely normal collaborate and working together. We can create much more things if we work uh, together. You say you have, I remember when I was really young and when I arrived to United States in the bicentennial and San Francisco in 76, you know, I saw, you know, an incredible, beautiful picture about teamwork. And I think now it's time for to do teamwork, uh, adding generosity. I agree with you. And as uh, my partner in the um, uh, Board of Regents, Dr. Scott Levin, the chair of the Board of Regents, always likes to say uh, that the TEAM team is together, everyone achieves more. So, yeah. and as you say, teamwork allows us to achieve our dream work. So um, thanks again for your time. Uh, thanks for all you do for the world of surgery and do look forward to catching up on that handshake and that hug and that meal, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, American College of Surgeons.